Okay. My name is Alex Barnes. I used to be Alex Barnyanka. I was born in Transylvania and, and from Transylvania I went to uh, Transag, why they call working battalion. They, they didn't give us uh, guns, only uh, they were giving shovels. And after two years when I was in the over there in the camp, they was taking us in the second war to Russian and we was making uh, ditches for the soldiers and we was walking all the time in this food and we get not far from after Tarnopol and uh, the United States start the war against Germany and Russia. We was pushed back, we was coming back, and I was coming with five friends of mine in the cold. We had a very thin uniform because we went out in the spring and I, almost I was freezing a lot of my friend was frozen in legs and a hand and we was coming back till we came back to Ukraine. From Ukraine again back we was walking in the road close, the steam close and was freezing all over. And uh, when I was coming back I saw my two cousins, first one of the cousins he was uh, walking back in a frozen fo foot and uh, he stopped in one place. They say that that was a Hungarian hospital in the corn house. And uh, I was coming back, I lost him and I was coming back and I stopped in the, that was a bar as a bard over there, and I heard because we was standing over there, each other to warming up, a small bar, and I heard voices. I heard somebody was calling, Barnyanko, Barnyanko, and I was answering, and uh, my cousin was answering. So I knew that right away that's my cousin, and I say, Yeah, where are you? He said, who's calling me? I say, it's your cousin, Alex. And uh, I say, why don't you come out? Where are you again, he was asking. I say, I don't know where you are. I think he say, I am in the back. I say, I am in the front, but let me go out and to see each other. So I went out and I saw his two legs was really bent with the uh, towels and all this stuff, but he find it. So I say, you know what? No one, you're going to walk with me. He said, no, you just go ahead because I have a frozen fo foot and I can keep up with you. So that's what happened. So after a while, a few days later, I heard that the Doroshitz, this was uh, over there in the hospital, and he went in in that hospital and I heard that the Hungarian army was who was running out because they had the fire, they burned the hospital, and they had the fire. He tried to sneak out under, and how they saw the guys who were sneaking out, the Hungarian soldiers, they were shooting down everyone over there. So that's the way he died over there. The second, Cousin, I was going in the road alone, nobody was next to me, and I saw a truck was going, and my cousin recognized me. He was calling me, Alex, Alex, Alex. So I was running over there to go to the truck. He said, please don't do that because they're going to shoot you if you come in the truck. So I let him to go because I didn't have a choice to, different way to do it. So then I start to walking and I find my, 
five friends of mine, and in the road, one died, and another four, we went in to Ukraine, and one of the, uh, we was walking in a village, that we stopped early in the morning, about four o'clock, and a Russian guy was, with a big beard, and we scratched the window, and he said, come on in, come on in. He, he, a Russian, he said, Iji suda, Iji suda. So we went in, and so warm was in that house, we, he gave me uh, some vodka, we was drinking vodka, we fell asleep right away, and empty room, we went to the floor, and we fell asleep, and I heard that is uh, the uh, calling in the, with the trumpet, the people to get soldiers to get out because we're getting an attack. So I said to my friends over there, one was wake up and he said, "Where are you going, Alex?" I said, "Did you hear that the trumpets was uh, sung of the trumpet?" I said, "Let we go." He said, "No, I'm so tired. I stay. Go ahead if you want." I went out. And I wasn't too far, but one mile from that little place, and they bombed the whole town, so all my friends died over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was just going, going, while I was going, I had, uh, I put my hand in my pockets, pants pocket, it was freezing, and I had a diary, you know, running diary and how I was walking I pulled my pants not even I buckled up my pants was that cold weather and all the time I just sit and do the duty and uh, I was walking like that then I stopped one place Italian group was over there they was cooking and I was so hungry they was asking me if I want to eat I say sure I am so hungry so I saw that they had over there a few cats, and they barbecued the cats. So uh, I was eating that. Then when we was going further up, further up, then I find the Hungarian groups, and I went in over there. So I was with them and uh, the soldiers. And how I went in, I find another two friends of mine who was walking to Kiev, and we were so hungry, he said, one of my friends said that, why we don't stop over here? Here is a church, maybe we can go in and we get some food over there. So I was in steps, a lot of steps was over there to go in in the Kiev church. And I stay in the bottom, in the steps. And these two was, matter of fact, one only, and another one was following him. He opened up the church door. Oh, he opened up the church to blow up the whole building. All my two friends died over there. So I had no choice. I walked again alone. I was walking alone, and again I find two of my friends who was with me in the camp. We went in the Hungarian camp in the Transylvania, and he was telling us he was uniform, uh, Hungarian uniform, and he got cut from German because they said that they was running away from the army. So what happened? These two, the German, they was hiding first in the bar. Under the bar they had uh, woods under the bar, and the German came and the horse barred was, and they was under, and they was, the horses was warming up them under the, because they has to hide. So when they left, they was going to, so they going in the road, they came the Germans, and they said that they were spy. So they put in the wall to shoot these guys. They had 10 soldiers, German soldiers, to shoot these guys. And the Hungarian army was coming, and one general from the officer from the army said that, please, wait, wait. So the Germans was waiting, and he was telling the Germans, this is my soldiers, 
and please don't do that. So that's what they did. So they let the they was sir I mean they was afterward they got the Hungarians they was serving that some food over there they give that and they was walking through with the uh, Hungarian army. So I was walking with them <clears throat> and uh, finally came the time so they said that this uh, the war is over and we let you guys to go home. So we went to Hungary, so they put us in the truck and they were taking us to Yugoslavia, the quarantine. So we were staying over there a few weeks, then I came back. But uh, before we came home, because I was very skinny, and I went to my sister and my brother-in-law Budapest, and they was giving food, and then from there, I went home that before they draft me, my mother, when they, she heard that she got a heart attack and uh, she has to stay in the bed. So after two years, when I get home, my mother still was alive, but most of the time she was in the bed. One Friday night I get home and my younger sister was home with my parents and uh, my two sister was uh, in Budapest and I going home Friday night, Shabbos night and we had the backyard and the kitchen door was in the backyard and I stopped over there to go in the house. How I was going in, my sister saw me in the window in the evening is Alex is home. Three times she said, Alex is home, Alex, mom, Alex is home, Alex is home. Oh, my mother, like nothing happened, she got up for the bed, she said, now I'm going to serve for my son a good dinner. So that's what happened over there in, in the good dinner. Now it's coming the time when I went in, where I went to school, they call Nagyvarad, and I was living in a family, and uh, in the morning I get up, and there has a sign over there, all the Jews, they has to go to a uh, temple. That's the ghetto. So I, I figured up, nobody was taking me from in Hungary, from the uh, Budapest, for the streetcars, from the train, because I didn't look like I'm Jewish, but all the Jewish, they were taking off for the train, and for the uh, streetcar. So I said to myself, and the, I saw the sign, if anything happened with the, all the Jews, that's going to happen with me. I'm not going to hide, I'm not going to go no places. So uh, after that, they took us to Auschwitz, and uh, they were taking Auschwitz right, uh, two days later. They were taking him to really Auschwitz, where we had the brick homes over there. Birken, they call Birken over which we stopped at train stop. Then for Birken, oh, that was Auschwitz, where I was working in the brick, uh, I mean, right there in the uh, brick house. They was taking us, I was working in the lumber yard. And the lumber yard was in, close to the street. And how we was working, I heard the noise. They was coming, the women from Birkenau to the shower, because our camp, they had the shower. And uh, the, all the women, so I stand up in the big uh, woods over there, and standing and watching this woman and somebody calling me. Alex, Alex, I, I look around and who is calling me? So my sisters was coming, no hair, was covered, and I couldn't recognize. I said, this is Rose, this is uh, Sarah. So I said, where are you? So I said, took off the head, the towel, and I recognized then the faces. So a friend of mine, his name was Pine Zoli, 
he uh, was working in the uh, in the uh, camp and uh, in the uh, place where the people who came to Birkenau, they took everything away. They, they had lots of Jewish people. They had hollies, cookies, cakes, and everything. And he, he was working in that site, in that building, where he, he was breaking the bread, they breaking the cookies, breaking the cakes, to find if they had gold. So they had over there lots of rags, like uh, cover a head and everything, clothing and everything. So I told him, Zori, can you do me a favor? My sister probably coming again tomorrow, because twice a week they was bringing to shower. So can you bring me some comb and everything, and toothpaste and toothbrush, and uh, if you find some mail over there? He said that I'm going to try. So he brought me, so I took, they had one there, uh, I had a, uh, what we call a towel, and I put in the towel all these things, and my sister came, I throw down in the street to them to have. And they have no knowledge, is they stopped the per, per, period, every month what they're getting, the females, and I no no idea is they can use all these things. And then he had no hair. So after a while, after when we uh, survived, they were telling me that is, you know, that you were so nice and good to us. You want to be, to ha we have safety, we have everything. And uh, sorry, but we couldn't use it. So finally, uh, they was taking us. I had the ca camp uh, capo who was a criminal from Austria. And that guy saved my life. Every time he was coming into our building, he came to the front. I was in his back. He said, stay in the back and don't, don't worry, don't say nothing. So that's the way he saved my life in Auschwitz. Once we get to Dachau, because they transferred us to Dachau. I missed him. He is not there anymore. So myself, I was thinking, oh gosh, who's going to save me most now? Because this guy was saving. So we went to Dachau, and from Dachau we went out to uh, another city, and uh, from there we were, they were taking us a place were underground, they was building over an underground uh, airport, and uh, we had the four by four, uh, what, uh, what's the name, four by four uh, wood, and uh, we have to go down just like a step, we go for one, for another one, and anybody fall with 50 pound sack cement we had. And I was a skinny guy, a young guy, and we was going down. If somebody fell down from there, that was that. So from there, he was taking us in the, uh, for that uh, place because they heard that the American troops closer and closer. They was taking us with a train, from the train, for the wagon, and they want to gassing us to go to Garmisch Partenkirchen, that's in Germany, and to gas us over there. And then he had, thank God, we then he had the chance because American troops was coming in the road, and we was in the top, like a hill, and the train was over there. And when somebody was opening up the all the wagons, all the things over there, they open up so we can run out. So the SS, they open up because they was afraid the American troops is getting closer. So how they open up, friend of mine and me, we run out in that hill and there was a jeep over there, go in the jeep and there was a general and we went up in the jeep and this, uh, the driver said, that, get off, get off, you can't come here, this is the general, you can't go. The general said that, leave alone, that we take him to Tutsing. 
Tutsing was a small town, it's a very nice town, where they had the camp over there, the American soldiers. So that was about six o'clock in the evening, and uh, we was going with the, tr uh, with the jeep, we stopped, that was the camp, and the soldiers, they was eating. So they told us, stay in the side, and after when the soldiers is finished, you get food too. We, we was very hungry because we didn't have no food over there and very skinny food we had in the camp and uh, a three inch, three inch uh, bread and every morning the same soup, every day the same lunch and the evening hardly we get something. So that bread has to last for three menu. So when we went over there in the over there in the camp, the American camps, all the soldiers was getting chocolate and they was bringing for us three. We was three over there and they was bringing the chocolate and we didn't know where to put it because it was full out in our pocket. Our shirt, we was putting in the chocolate in our shirt, everything. And then the time came we had the dinner. Now, the, one of the officers said, oh, we have to put these three guys someplace to sleep, one, one of these private homes. So three soldiers come. There was a nice color guy and two white ones. We went to the castle. Well, there was a castle. And uh, that was fences. And they ring the bell. And the butler, the owner, and the maid, and the wife, they came down over there. Who is in the door? So the soldiers said that, open up the door, when they came down. And the butler, he had a big mug, the colored guy, he gave a punch in the nose, he fell down, he said, now you guys see, this guy going to stay over here, he said that, this guy going to occupy your castle over here, and you guys out. But we have to have our toothpaste and all, all these things. I don't care, you have to go out. They went out, we locked it, fence over there and everything. And we went in a big building, a big house. We had over there lots of drink in the basement and uh, lots of chocolate and lots of things over there. We, we didn't starve over there. So next day, a friend of mine said, that, look at that, the next door, he has chicken. We should eat chicken. So he went over there, he took two chicken, he still two chicken for three hours, and we cooked it. We had a good chicken soup, we ate that, and we stayed over there at least one week. And then a friend of mine said that, he said, let me look around what they has in the basement. In the basement was his uh, winery. In the basement, you should see that how much wine and uh, champagne, Everything and liquor, everything was over there. So sure, we was hungry. We was, we didn't see this one long time. We was drinking and fall asleep and eating. <laughs> so after one week, we get out and we went. They transferred us because they opened up a hotel in Walheim, not far from Tutzing. Is uh, that was a hotel just for the uh, survivors. So we had over there, they cooked over there and everything, we get that one. So we didn't have a good a bad time, but we had a bad memory. We had a bad memory. And uh, that's, we're never going to forget that. My mother and my father went, my, my sister, to Birkenau. So my father had a surgery uh, before, about 10 days before, they transferred them to the camp. He had a surgery, a hernia surgery. So when they got to the camp, and my sister was over there, they, they was asking over there, anybody who can walk at least one mile, then they should go up in this truck. So sure, my daddy ride away, and my mother saw daddy going up in the truck. He, she said that I'm not going to let my husband alone because he had a surgery operation. So they went in the truck. My sister saw that. My sister didn't put it on because only these people who couldn't 
walk, and all these people who was in the truck straight to the gas chamber. The, the kid right away, my parents over there. My father was 41 year old, my mother was, no, 51 year old, excuse me, 51 year old, my 10 year was older, my daddy. My mother was 41. And they had uh, four kids, three sisters I had, and I was only one boy left over. So they all three, we, all four, we survived. And uh, they was in Budapest, my two sisters, and we brought out when, after when we got citizen. And they was here. So my sister and my brother-in-law was uh, 87 year old. And my brother-in-law died about five years ago. And after that, my sister died. My brother-in-law <coughs> died. They, they amputated one leg and the heart couldn't take it, so he died. My sister died after three years later and she had the same problem with the heart and she passed away too. Then when we came to Germany and we was in that camp, that uh, in that uh, hotel, from there we uh, my, met my wife, Rose, Grimfeld, and uh, we married over there after one year, not even one year, but after three weeks, we knew each other, we married, and she had the aunt, and uh, she had the grandma, and three more aunts, and one, two more, <coughs> two more uncle, they was living in South America in Buenos Aires, and one aunt was living in New York, who sent us the affidavit. We came to uh, New York, and uh, I, I had the occupation. I was a fancy glove maker, leather glove maker, and that's what I was doing when I came back. And then finally we came to United States, and uh, in Long Island, in Long Beach, Long Island, and we were staying with them over there for uh, about a month. After one month, we came to Chicago, and we were staying in Chicago, and uh, after Chicago, we came to Arizona, and we we are in Arizona 20, uh, one year already in Arizona. Now, I need to tell you the, uh, the my working uh, battalion when I was in the but I told you that too. Yeah. I went to the working battalion and everything. But uh, from there I had suffered over there a lot when we was in Russia. And uh, when we was in Russia and when we was walking, we walked in the homes. And over there was living one woman and a little girl. And she was afraid to let us in. And uh, I said to the woman, "Is we are we are jid? They call the Russian Ebreu or jid." So she said that I'm a Ebreu, I'm a doctor, and I am living over here with my daughter. So she was so nice. She was giving bread for us and everything. And so I had a lot of these things when we was walking through the country over there. And by th thank God, we came to United States. And almost I was bending down while I was crying, how good country we came. And uh, I said that to my wife, I don't care what we're going to do. If we have to be a maid or anything, or cleaning the cars or cleaning anything, we're going to do. But we are lucky we got in this country. So my wife was crying too. She said that uh, she left, she lost her two brothers and the mother and father in a concentration camp. And she doesn't have nobody survive for her. I can see it, at least my three sisters I survived. But uh, this is the story, my story. And uh, 
I had a, a very bad experience. I had a good education, life education, life education. But uh, when, I, when I had them, after that I had two kids. My daughter's name is Rita Sobor, and my son is Ronald Barnes, who came to be a doctor. And uh, he has a nice family. They live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we go and go over there visiting, because I have five grandkids. My daughter has two sons. One is Daniel, one is Brandon. My son has three kids, two girls, and one son, the oldest girl is Rachel in the college, my youngest girl is Emma, and my grandson is Zoli. I give that name for Zoli for my grandson because I had the best friend whom I was going here, uh, we were in the camp over there in Transylvania, in Nightbanyo. <coughs> And we was together in the Tsang Sarbet, in the working battalion, the Russian. We was together in the camp, and we survived. He survived. He married over there in Chicago. And when supposed to be 60 year old, he passed away. He got the heart attack, and he passed away. So I lost my, one of the best friends. And I had another five good friends I didn't survive. The whole friends that I had, I had one friend of mine who, live, who used to live in New York, he passed away. I had a friend of mine who, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, that was another friend. I had four friends, one in Israel, and I had one in New York, another one in New York, four friends who, they all five who survived. That's all. Nobody came back, all my friends. And right now, there's only friend live, that's in Israel. One friend, and we're talking to him almost every year, but three times. He called and I called. So, I get married, I had a wonderful wife and a nice Jewish girl from uh, Satmar. Her name was Grimfeld Rosie. Excellent, excellent.